So this is my old house, and uh, if you've been following along the Ops and Vlogger series, uh, you know that we have a very big battery and a very big inverter sitting down in the basement. And uh, since some time back, I also got an electric car. Uh, so, there's obviously some thought behind all this, because we've got some groundworks going, and uh, that's because I'm going to be putting up some solar panels on the old barn over there. Uh, so, uh, we're going to be putting in about 7 kilowatts worth uh, 18 365 watt panels is the plan uh, on top of my uh, small toy play pretend solar system there which is about a kilowatt peak. So uh, let's uh, have a look at what's going on and what the plan is. So. Uh, this is my trench that I'm quite proud of. This is completely hand dug from start to finish, about to 35 centimeters deep as per electrical regulations here. Uh, and uh, this is going to be carrying the pipe with uh, quite a few wires inside. Uh, I'm going to be running at least two DC leads uh, and one uh, 3 times 25 square millimeter power lead for the barn because uh, we have this old aerial cable going to the pole over there and this thing is getting longer every year and I'm not a very long tall person and I can almost reach up to touch that so uh, the uh, steel wire in this thing is just uh, failing and I want to get rid of it uh, it's also failed in the connection box so I can't even use it it's dead right now I wouldn't die if I touched it uh, so we're going to be getting some uh, 230 volt back from the house uh, that's going to be a solar uh, isolation breaker somewhere in this corner where the wires come up and the solar panels themselves are going to go uh, up on top of this side uh, of a barn. So, all of this, about 80% of it, is going to be powered, uh, covered in solar panels. Uh, the reason and we're going for this side rather than both sides, so this barn is not completely straight. Uh, we have safe in that direction, uh, and the barn is a couple of degrees tilted, so this side is slightly uh, southeast, whereas the other side is slightly uh, north northwest. Uh, so uh, the efficacy of panels on this side is um, much reduced. That's about a 10%. Uh, loss in power putting them on this side so we're going to be only doing the other side maybe in the future we'll put some on that or we'll put some on the wall here I might be able to fit quite a few 250 270 watt uh, like smaller panels on this side and this is facing pretty much straight east with uh, straight to uh, south which would be very good in winter because there's not a lot of obstructions actually and we could get a uh, decent performance uh, that way uh, this trench has taken a bit more work than it deserves to, but I really like just doing the handy work myself to see if I can. And uh, you can get quite far with just a shovel, a feeler rod, which is an old stilt, and uh, my pride and joy, my small pink plastic shovel. This thing has dug uh, this entire trench. It costs 120. I like this. Good shovel. So, uh, in this end, uh, there's going to be a couple of wires uh, going through uh, the wall. Uh, we're going to be putting, taking uh, like three 25mm holes through this wall. These are very thick walls since uh, this is an old very high quality house in Finland. Uh, it's about 30 centimeters thick uh, air gap insulated uh, uh, brick. Uh, so I don't want to take a big hole for everything. That's going to be three small ones. And we're going to take in my old solar wire, which is coming through the orange pipe there, and the 230 volts out of a barn, and the solar string DC, uh, the DC cables, uh, which are just going to go straight into the, the inverter. I might 
prepare uh, the solo wires is relatively cheap if I'll just uh, I'll just pull a second string as well of uh, two six square mil uh, solar cables just so that I have in case I want to put more solar panels over there if I want to move those guys uh, closer to the barn because they do get uh, somewhat obscured by the shadow of a house in the evening so I think putting them like at the foot of the south side of the barn there uh, would uh, uh, increase the performance a bit so I'm doing this uh, with the help of a local company. Uh, I'm not going to be climbing on top of a barn at all. Uh, they're going to be coming uh, sometime in the coming weeks uh, and putting up mains and at some point we're going to get the solar panels as well. Uh, I'm just not comfortable doing that. They're, they're two square meter solar panels uh, uh, and uh, I'm just not at all equipped to deal with that. So they get to do that. Uh, since we have very strict electrical laws in Finland, they also have to uh, inspect the electrical installation uh, but I'm going to be doing all the electrical work myself uh, again if you've seen the ops vlog you've uh, seen that I've done at this point pretty much all the DC wiring for the inverter uh, the low voltage DC so now the next step is going to be uh, mains wiring I've got a lot of that stuff in the van here so uh, uh, this is uh, positive DC wiring, 500 meters of it, uh, and uh, that's uh, negative DC wiring. We have mains for some wall brackets. Uh, this black, uh, like 20 inch wheel, is uh, the 230 volt ground wire return to the barn, and uh, down there, the big coil is my inside wiring, so that's going to be running to and from the inverter. Uh, to allow me to run grid tie and off grid as I want to. Uh. Uh, yeah, so that's. I just want to get a shot of this uh, while I'm working because I'm probably going to be getting this uh, tube down soon enough and uh, then it's going to be all heated up again. Uh, the layout of the house is uh, this wall goes straight into the battery room. Uh, so we're going to be uh, entering straight uh, into the right room. We don't have to do any of the uh, DC wiring running on shelves or anything. It's just going to go like the inverters mounted and like there-ish. So super short run on the inside. All right, so for the big solar project, we need to pull some wiring to the, uh, shall we say, period correct electrical central here in the house. Uh, and we also need to pull that wiring down through the floor into uh, the inverter room. Uh, and uh, that's going to be a bit of an issue because this house is built on a very, that very sturdy uh, uh, isolated brick foundation. And that's a lot thicker than the inside walls. So we can see that uh, these walls are going out at a bit of an angle and they protrude right at the edge down the basement, so drilling these holes uh, is rather tricky. Uh, so I'm going to try and just enlarge vi these holes as much as I can uh, and remove any superfluous wires uh, in the process and perhaps we'll get away without having to drill any new holes. Uh, hopefully so, because there's a fair bit of optimization we can do here. Uh, so these two tubes I think we can easily turn into one. Uh, this is just the thermostat wire coming there. It's rather thin, not using a lot of tube. And this is just a ground wire for the uh, basement plumbing. Uh, and there's a lot of space in that tube as well. Uh, so I think we can just uh, undo this and uh, jam it up uh, this tube instead. Uh, and uh, this guy uh, is carrying two phases uh, and uh, to exactly one light fixture and one outlet in the inverter room. Uh, and since we're going to be pulling three phase straight in there, that's going to be a small sub-central gun, uh, we can just pull the function of this wire straight from that central in the basement instead. So we can just remove this one entirely. Uh, and uh, this one, I think, is the uh, power supply for the heat pump, uh, which is uh, three, 316 amp uh, phases. And uh, this is also going to go straight to uh, the uh, central in the basement because I need to do 
uh, a bit of extra wiring for the heat pump to make it off gridable uh, and grid tieable and all kinds of fancy stuff. Uh, so, really, these wires are just going to go away. Uh, this one we can put into that tube, and that saved us the width of three tubes already. Uh, it's still going to be a bit interesting because the new wire I'm running is uh, five times six square mil. It's considerably fatter than any of this, so I'm probably going to have to. Uh, increase the size of the holes anyway uh, but hopefully we can get away with just putting the big SDS drill and uh, mongering it into the hole making it uh, bigger rather than putting a new hole in uh, next to everything. Alright so to pull the furthest that were through as you can see I've shoved it down the pipe and I've shoved down a long thin uh, copper cord uh, to the basement and uh, Downstairs, I've taped them together, so hopefully, we're going to be able to pull it through. Need to do a bit of adjusting still. Beautiful. Not a problem at all. And there we go. Thermoset wired up through the uh, grained. Uh, tube for the piping so when I have this guy free we can remove that in time uh, but uh, I want to get rid of more crap uh, namely this guy so this is a box in the basement where the uh, uh, wire in question ends up and if we pop the lid on that uh, we can see that we have uh, this is the incoming from upstairs we have uh, one brown face and one black face the brain face is going to uh, a connector, a neutral and grind is hooked up together, which is not okay since we already have a grind coming through. Naughty, naughty, whoever put this in there. Uh, and uh, that's going out of a little tiny wire there uh, to this, which is powering the light in here. And uh, currently my UPS is hooked up to that. Uh, However, right along the wiring for this, we have the safety switch for uh, the big heat pump. Uh, and this is one of the 360 now fuses that we pulled uh, are going to. So if we have a look inside the safety switch, uh, it's uh, got uh, three phases, neutral and ground uh, at 16 amps. Uh, so what I'm going to do is a bit of an ugly while we're working on this. I'm just going to uh, pull this wire out of the uh, current connector and uh, just kind of throw it on there, uh, grab power from the heat pump uh, fuse uh, in order to power this until we get the new electrical in uh, central ins uh, installed down here. Uh, so we're going to be naughty, we're going to be having uh, a 3 times 1.5 square mil cable uh, fused at 16 amps, that's not okay, you're, you, you, you're only supposed to go up to 13 amps on these, uh, but uh, that's also a, a rule that's there for uh, wires that are uh, in walls and stuff like that. The risk of this wire going uh, on fire because it's fused at 16 amps is absolutely minuscule. Uh, Everything else is rated for 16 amps, and this is going to nothing but a 2200 VA UPS. So I'm, I'm comfortable doing this as a temporary solution, but it's not really okay in the long run. And also, I'm not going to worry properly, I'm just going to leave the lid off of this thing. <laughs> so it's going to be not nice while we're working here, but it's just a temporary solution. So I can get rid of the wiring and pull the new stuff. All right, there we go. That is not up to code, but you know, for the time being, it's just going to be there a few days. We should have lights. All is good. We can put the UPS back on there. Don't need to run on the inverter anymore. There we go. Beautiful. And you can die. So that now means that uh, this uh, cable is uh, no longer in use, uh, the fuses are pulled right now. Uh, sadly I can't keep it completely dead because it's sharing uh, a fuse with uh, the uh, internet stuff upstairs so I'd be 
I had been to notify, uh, just let this be dead. Uh, but uh, we're going to see what happens. Uh, getting rid of it is going to be a bit annoying as well because I have, uh, have to ex uh, access the lower part of the central, which is uh, uh, a bit dangerous because the main fuses are there. Uh, so we'll have to see what I do about that. But, uh, well, for the time being, I can just uh, get rid of these and at least uh, get rid of a wire as far as it goes. Just coil it up and let it hang uh, somewhere over here to uh, have it out of the way.